Hello, welcome to this time of daily prayer and reflection. My name is Rich Schmidt, one of the pastors here at Living Hope Community Church in Valparaiso, Indiana. Uh, let's begin with this prayer. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Uh, I've just been reminded again today in a couple different ways of the truth of what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Uh, in preparation for this new message series that's starting this Sunday on our big, tough, awkward questions, I've been reading and sometimes engaging in some online conversations about some controversial topics, and I'm reminded once again that uh, my perspective is limited and my knowledge is partial and incomplete. I don't know everything. None of us do, but we can be pretty good at pretending sometimes or coming across to others as if we have all the answers, everything figured out, and then we draw battle lines. Right? And we take shots at people who disagree with us. We call them ignorant or evil or whatever other insult we think will help us win or make us feel better or whatever. Uh, the Apostle Paul was dealing with something like this in that church at Corinth that he wrote that verse to. Uh, lots of divisions among the believers there, which is why he spends time in the chapter right before, chapter 12, reminding them that we are all members of one body, the body of Christ. We all have different gifts, different roles to play. We're not all eyes or ears or hands or feet. We're all different. But it's the same Holy Spirit who gives us these gifts, who gives us life. It's the same God at work in all of us in all these different ways. We're all serving the same Lord, our Lord Jesus the Christ. And then he starts chapter 13 with this. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. He seems to be saying, all these things that you're bickering about there in Corinth, these are good things. But if you don't have love, they're meaningless. They don't do you any good. So have fun possessing all knowledge, or at least thinking you do. Have fun speaking all those languages. Have fun boasting about how much you've sacrificed for others. If you don't have love, these things are empty. They get you nowhere. I mean, remember what Jesus told his disciples. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you have all the right answers. Wait, no, that's not it. Uh, this is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you win the debate on the internet. Ah, I keep getting this one wrong. Sorry. Uh, this is how everyone will know you are my disciples, when you love each other. Our love for each other, our love for our neighbors, our love even for our enemies. This is what shows the world that we are followers of Jesus, who lived that kind of love until it killed him. And then he defeated death and rose again so he could continue to love. To go back to 1 Corinthians 13, the Apostle Paul, after describing the emptiness of our religious accomplishments and everything else, if we don't have love for other people, he goes on to talk about what that love looks like. He says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. That is the kind of love that I want to display in my life. That's the kind of love we see in Jesus. As we search for answers, as we do our best to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we have to make sure that we continue to love our neighbors as ourselves. Now, there are a lot of things I still don't fully understand. But one thing I do understand is the centrality of love. If I'm going to follow Jesus, whether I understand everything or not, one thing I can't let go of is that I must live a life of love, a life that looks like Jesus. 
Uh, let's begin our prayers with this prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Uh, God, thank you for loving us and for inviting us to love each other. Uh, you not only invite us, but you, you make it possible by your Holy Spirit that lives within us. You have poured the love of Christ into our hearts and have transformed us by it. You have forgiven our sins, conquered our enemy, the devil, and set us free to love you and to love each other, even those who would treat us like enemies. Thank you, God. Please help us to continue to experience this love that you have for us every single day. Continue to be good to us and gracious to us so that we can extend your love and grace and goodness to the people around us. Let's pray together this prayer of thanks. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to close with that same blessing that we used yesterday. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.